Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum where today, well, we've actually got quite a few bits and pieces going on. That's it, I've said it already. But today, we're gonna be diving into the pile of our stuff that we received from Benpack when we received the auto stackers, namely the quick jack. Now that comes as three pieces. You've got both of the, I guess the jacking sections here and then the motor that goes with it as well. And we're gonna be unboxing those and seeing just how helpful those are because we're gonna be changing the brakes on Brad's Fiat 124 above. A Fiat, Fiat above? It's just above 124. Above 124, okay. Mazda, whatever you want Mazda. to call it. Mazda, yeah, yeah, there we go. We're modifying the car. Yes, we are actually gonna be upgrading the brakes on that one to a much more significant set. And I think you're gonna have some serious stopping power. Hopefully, and there's uh, a few other bits I've done before. So we'll get obviously into that yes. later on once we've got it up on the quick jack. And I mean, I've off. just seen what you've got and I think it's quite safe to say it's gonna be fairly over braked, but that's a yeah. good thing. Yeah, shout out to Tarex for sending some brakes out, but we'll get on yes. to that. Also, the GT Black series is going out on the road again. I know, I know, I just can't stop driving it lately. What? It's leaving already. It's not leave, temporarily, temporarily, because obviously this has just come back from Dubai and we're gonna send it off to Mercedes Brooklands just for a, a post run shakedown just to make sure everything's okay, get the oil changed, because obviously Tim did push it quite hard on a few circuits out there in some very, very hot conditions. So I think it's best we just run that through a service. And as I said, it's only due next month. So we're only doing it a month early. So it's not too bad. And then that's ready for whatever Tim has planned with it coming up. Also, we have a bit of big news. Oh, we do. Some really big news. And a lot oh. of you guys have been asking about this, but if you have a look over there, you will see the Senna is home. Finally. It is. Myself and Brad went and collected this one from the dealership yesterday. Unfortunately, we didn't film the journey because, mostly because I didn't want to. I wanted to just try and enjoy the car because I've never actually driven the Senna before. That was so your first drive. It was my Senna. first, I mean, my first longer road, drive. Yeah. yeah, I've driven it, I've moved it around here and the there. And, and public done road, proper drive yes. from McLaren back to here. That was the first drive I did where there was a risk of a truck on the motorway for example so it was quite a nervous experience but it's back it's fine it's in one piece there is a lot of explanation to go on with this car where it's been it's actually going away again we've only brought it back truth be told so it can go down to the goodwood festival of speed before it will be going back to mclaren and i think it's probably best we let tim explain that one when he's back from the states anyway as we said at the start of the video we have Brad's 124 above just over here. In the halo space. And I, well, I guess I should let you talk through yeah, this we'll one. Yeah, we're going to chat about what we have. Yeah, but you take the camera. Yeah. Let's this is where out. the filming gets really bad. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so we'll quickly run through, I guess, what we've got. Yeah. So Tarrant UK have very kindly sent out discs and pads for the above. I, I know I said I'm going to let you run through this. Go on. But I have to, guys. Just, just to come down here, the parts have arrived. Mazda. Mazda. Yeah. I, I, sorry, I just had to get the one out of the way. There's a lot of Mazda branding on uh Because <laughs> everyone, everyone was very mean to me and said, I'm, I'm just, well, everyone said I'm very mean to you for calling this a Mazda, but it basically really is. And you did ask people to tell me to put the plates on yeah. and that it is a Mazda. And I got many comments on Instagram, TikTok. There were YouTube comments, just everything saying, Brad, your car's a Mazda. And I was like. Still ain't got your plates on though. Uh, they're not on yet. They will go on. <laughs> but I guess anyway, we, we can show some as the badges later. Breaks. When we go underneath. But anyway, yeah, more importantly, Tarex, um, we have a nice little thank you card. Sort of runs through some of the options. Um, so we went for a fast road track setup. Yes, I use this every day, but it's, it's only sort of short journeys. It's nothing too crazy. Weekends, it gets a longer run. But we've gone for the, I think the Strada pads. Strada, does that mean road? It's Strada Street, yep. Street. So we've gone for Strada for the rear pads. Okay. We've gone for Corsa for the front. Um, obviously, we'll get them out later and actually look at them. Yep. And we've gone for their F2000, or is it F200 disc? No, F2000. F2000 disc. I can, I, I'm only saying that because I can see it written on the box from here. This is one of the rears. It's got this sort of like spiral slotted design on it. Which they do look lovely. It's quite nice. This is the rear, so it's fairly thin. The front Obviously, are... I'm guessing that's going to help dissipate quite a bit of the heat build up from the yeah, braking. So, so we, we've gone for a fairly sort of fast road, sporty setup for it. Uh, recently did a few other brake upgrades, which obviously we'll have a look at once it's in the end. The wheels are off, but I guess for now, we should leave these and go and get the GC Black Series over to Brooklyn. So 
I'll jump in the Cupra, which is outside. You jump in that. Yeah. And we'll hit the road. I'll definitely jump in that. Let's go. Fast forward uh, well, a few minutes, actually, and Brad's decided that he's going to do the service on the car himself. Well, actually, yeah, we're going to service it ourselves. We're going to put the brakes on my car on here. No, um, we'll put the brakes from here on your car. Yes, there we go. We're going to put these brakes on mine and put the turret's brakes on this. Yeah. Okay, that's not what's happening. So, uh, on the way back from Ipswich, Bury St. Edmunds, this tyre was actually low and we stopped, pumped it up and all was fine. The entire journey back was absolutely fine. However, just pulling it out now, it's low once again and clearly has quite a slow puncture. So fortunately, we do have a spare set of wheels and tyres which Brad is now fitting the rear to now. These are the original wheels that came with the car before we managed to pick up a second set of wheels and tyres which we switched on for the Dubai trip because these have some use in them. Not, you know, they're not, they still have three to four millimeters, but given what was coming up, they would have died very quickly, hence getting the new set. So Brand's popping the old set of rears on now. And I think at some point, once it comes back from Mercedes, we'll get the fronts done afterwards because they've still got plenty of life left in them. And then we'll have the original set back on the car. Anyway, we're going to proceed with this. And then I guess the next clip given that we're in diff second cars, or sec different cars, will probably be us arriving at Mercedes Brooklands. And just like that, we are down here at, so we have, we are down here at Mercedes Brooklands, otherwise known as Mercedes Benz World. I've just been handing over the car to the service team here whilst Brad has been watching everyone do skids on the skid pan. That's quite entertaining. I mean, it is. Just seeing, there was an AMG GT as we drove in, literally going down, and the next one it was just- that. Did you not sideways. see the C63 estate that was fully crossed what? up? That was, that was, come on. I'm kind of it's jealous. Car. Um, anyway, I guess it's time for us to both hop in the Cooper and head back towards the museum. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the viewing area. Welcome to the viewing area. Mercedes Benz World skid pan and track and stuff. Unfortunately, we have no one on the skid pan right now, but I'm going to do some zooming in and you'll see the guys are currently going around the circuit. It's an AMG GTR Pro. Yeah, we did decide we'd come and have a look at this again before leaving. Yeah, they were doing some skids, so we thought we'd, you know, we mentioned it, so we thought we'd come and show you, and typically, now no one's doing skids. Oh, that That's sounds good. good. I like them. And there, we have an aeroplane that just took off in front of us, and we are on the way. We are cruising back around the lovely M25. Brad is at the wheel of the Cupra. Can't stand this road. You have fell in love with this car, though, haven't you? No, I'm rather enjoying this car. Um, I put a lot of miles on over the weekend. You have? I was quite um, shocked how many, actually. Yeah, I've just been enjoying it. I've had it on motorways, I've had it on B roads, I've had it on country lanes, and it's a fun drive. You put it into individual, how we set it up, or into Cupra or whatever, you get it on a um, on a British B road, and you can have some fun with it. It definitely moves down one very similar to a, to a Golf R, like we've sort of compared it to a larger Golf R, I guess. We are back. We're here inside this museum. And that means only one thing, if only you could see the smile on Brad's face because he's about to get new brakes. So, well, he's already got the new brakes, but we're gonna, we're gonna, put, them, them. We're gonna put them on the Mazda. It means I kind of get new toys. We kind of get new toys. A quick jack. We, but it's probably only you that's ever gonna use it. So yeah, so we have a couple of regular floor jacks here, which we probably need to move out of the way. Yep. Tools at the ready, but first we need to get this set up. We have, now I've taken all of the straps off of this one. I've then took the lid off and there was more straps holding down this bit of wood. Three. So you guys are going to see at the same time as us what is underneath. Oh, cool. Okay. So we've that got some pretty... polystyrene. Is that the instructions? You know you said that you hope there's some instructions. Good. There are. Set up an operation so manual. The downside is... It's quite thick. That's quite thick. So that's going to take some going through. I'll leave that one with you. Meanwhile... I'm gonna see if Let's I get can. Some packaging. I'll slide this box out of the way. I'm see if I can get this one out. I'm gonna pop the scissors down briefly. This looks is nice. looking looks lovely. lovely. Yeah. As so, do our, our lifts. Does our, this? Uh, water stackers. Does this just lift up like that? It does. Yeah. This. Do you know what? It's a shockingly quite heavy when it's out of the box. It's weird. Maybe it's because you helped me lift the box previously. Maybe. But... Yeah. There we go. So we. Oh, this is exciting. Pop that one down. I don't know if it's in the right direction or not, but piece one is out. I guess we've got another box to do now. So myself and Brad now find ourselves with a load of these kind of connectors. Brad's just here reading the instruction manual. 
if I come over here, you'll start to see some of the bits we've got laid out. So we've got a load more of these kind of hydraulic connections which need to go in. Here we have our lifting blocks. We've got hydraulic hoses here. We've got more there. The motor is now out in here and we've got the, I guess the ramp sections laid out just here. So reading through the instruction manual, we fear we may need an air compressor. Possibly. Which yeah. I think we're gonna keep going and Till we get to that point yeah there's only one way to find out right yeah this should all go well we just need to hope we have enough of the equipment to do it worst case we can still fit the brakes we can do it the old-fashioned way yeah but let's see we need to figure money. this one out so as we are currently up to in the manual i believe brad is going to need that nice. piece there which is the bit depicted right there and then we've got a bit to unscrew from here and then that goes in there connects one of these hydraulic hoses to it which then goes to another hose over to the motor. So we'll be working on this. So I might need some gloves as well, because I can feel some yep. liquid. It's going to be a bit oily so, or something. So yeah. we're going to keep working on this and um, hopefully have some success. Well, I think it's safe to say that we are not plumbers. However, or hydraulic fitters. About 40 minutes has gone by. Probably shouldn't admit that. But we've got to the stage where we've got both sides of the quick jack laid out. We've got our hydraulic hoses now attached at this end with the elbow, yep. waiting to go at this the end. The long ones are ready. These ones are all together with their PTFE tape and... Uh, quick release connections? Quick release connections. I was more thinking of the locking... Oh, the thread sealant. Thread lock, yep. Thread yep. sealant, which came with it as quick well. Quick on the sort of motor end. We sh now, we actually yep. need to go on a run because we need to get we do. a funnel. So, so we are now at the point in the instruction manual where we need to fill the fluid reservoir. So we need to go and get some... Or We'll, we'll take a photo of this and bring it so we know exactly what we need. We'll just take it along, but any synthetic multi-vehicle automatic transmission fluid. So we're just going to get some automatic transmission fluid, a couple litres of that. Annoyingly, it's 2.1 quarts or two litres, which again is about... But look, we'll see what happens. Oh, we'll, we'll buy two litres, hopefully. We'll buy two and a half, so we've got some left over should we ever need it. We should probably just take yeah. this with us. So that, what else do we need? A uh, funnel to obviously put that into there without making a mess. And then we have to basically fill it bleed any air out of the system yeah um, and then hopefully not long after that we'll Although, be able to start lifting it also our fridge is empty so while we're out i propose we stop to tesco and yeah we and can get some get some drinks supplies tom yes why can i see hr own sign behind us and a classic a officina on the wall i can also see a gorgeous ferrari 612 scalietti um the reason we are here probably needs explaining is whilst we was out grabbing our bits and pieces yes i said it take a shot <laughs> while we was out grabbing some stuff uh mostly the automatic transmission fluid we got some uh, uh we refreshments got a, yeah yeah got quite bits. quite a lot of refreshments a couple other little bits while we were out we can show the boot and how full it is actually in a minute yeah okay we'll show you everything that we've got um anyway i got a call from the guys down here at hro in ferrari because tim asked me to bring the sf90 down here just for a post-trip shakedown because obviously it did do an awful lot of miles in quite a short space of time so we brought that down here. Oh, I thought I heard it as a different SF90. Um, so we brought it down here just for the guys to go over it, effectively give it a service and make sure all is okay. All is good. That's now ready to collect. Look what we have here. It looks good in the sunshine, right? It does. Do you know what as well? It's the first time I've ever seen the reverse lights. SF90, Cupra, let's go. This is the lead that I believe we need in order to power the motor for our quick jack because it wasn't supplied with one so moment of truth because brad said to me do you know what you're doing and i went yeah 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 i've got it boom and look at that i actually do i wasn't just guessing honestly okay so now it's time for the automatic transmission fluid and you are looking at brad sorry about that one i'm just figuring out how this thing works are we gonna spill any no no we are good so we need about two liters of this or until it's about half an inch away from the top, is it? Uh, yeah, about half an inch from the top. So okay. we'll start with one full liter and then we'll see put half or so in. This is exciting. And very we'll soon, we should be able to very easily take all four wheels of the car off the ground. We are making a little bit of mess as we go here. However, good progress. We've got the reservoir. I couldn't think of the word for a second. Yep. We've got the reservoir fully topped up. That bleed valve is now in the correct position where it needs to be. And it's now time to connect some hoses. This should be quite simple, right? You it should just like be a case of they connect to that because they have male and female connectors. So 
that the female, this one you're about to take off should now be the male connector. Yep. There we go. So we'll just pop this over because it came with it. So, we might so in it theory, together. that slides straight into that. You just put these two together. Ah. That seems about right. Ah, there you go. And yeah, that so then you'll pull that down to release. Up. Ah, there we go. Oh, there you go. Broke. Easy. Okay, so one we're gonna do the done. rest of these, get those connected to the reservoir slash motor. And is that it? Are we then done? Is oh, this the last step? I'm sure there's a few things to do to test and whatever else, but for now, good we're, progress. We're getting close. Brad has now brought the Abarth down and I think we've got everything done, hence why the car is here. We've now expanded our floor mats. So again, the beauty of those is, yeah, now we can both sit there next to each other and help work on the car. As I said, we've got both of the lifting ramps that are done. Those are then connected by hydraulics over to the motor, which is now filled with fluid. Those are all bled and in theory, ready to go. We've obviously tested it without the car on and there is only so far you can go. Now over here, the beauty of the quick jack, I think as Brad kind of hinted at, is it's great for low vehicles. So we've got our lifting blocks here. So those are the mediums and then you've got the large as well. So that enables you to slide the quick jack underneath the car with the correct lifting block to then get it on. There you go. So that is actually plenty of clearance there. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna come over here, I think, for the moment of truth. And I'm gonna get that three quarter view from back here. Let's go. All okay? I, I think we're absolutely fine. Look at that SF90 looking lovely in the lineup. Although at some point that is actually gonna come over this side and I think the Roadster will probably head over there. However, the above is in the air. See, I even called it by the right name that time. Thanks. We're going over that side, by the way. Okay, we're heading this side. Follow. We're heading this side. What are we doing now? Uh, we're actually gonna make a start on removing brake stuff. Okay. This will be fun. So we have wheels turn. And we have some really rather large Brembo calipers here, so yeah, fair boy. play. Sports car. And those, car. those are the discs you previously had on? Yep, different brand, we won't mention the brand. Okay. <laughs> um, pads have actually changed recently, just the basically standard ones. I think I've got standard something on the front, standard Brembo on the rear. Okay. Um, which was just because they got low and needed replacing, so it was just a temporary fix to basically make sure the car was um, still safe. So okay, we so have talk one. us through it, Brad. What? what what happens now what do we do because i know you said you know the brakes are coming off but for idiots like me we have to hope that i know what i'm doing <laughs> so somewhere around the back there is a bolt i can't remember if it's a 14 mil or a 17 somewhere around here it. Somewhere down a, there. okay somewhere down there there's a bolt. bolt i need to move and that will allow the calipers to come off we'll do both pull them out of the way we can then change pads pull the disc off and then put it all back on oh we have a modded recently these bad boys if you can see in there we now have some braided brake lines um, which made a huge difference, yep. first of all, and then obviously replaced fluid and bled the brakes, etc. So, yeah, they are pretty cool. So you've actually had a bit of a brake upgrade lately, and now yep. you're going for an even bigger brake upgrade. Yep. More in... brake upgrades because brake upgrades are good. Now, as you may be able to see, sorry for the slightly dodgy angle here, guys, there is a caliper off and no brake disc, and you probably would have just seen Brad. Let's pick that one up. That's off. Do you know what I d decided to do today? Choose the worst colour T-shirt to wear. Nice white T-shirt. You did. And it's definitely getting ruined. And at this point, I'm kind of like, whatever, it's done it's now. quite like a black t-shirt. You can't really tell. But let me just uh, pull my chair over. <laughs> oh, that was a bad idea. My hands are ruined. I've been wearing gloves for some of it. Yeah, not enough, clearly. A lot, lot of brake dust on those wheels, yeah. speaking of brakes. So. so we are currently dealing with I'm, the I'm gonna come down here and yeah, join me. I'm, I'm just on the floor. I, I like the fact that we've bought floor mats to not sit on the floor, floor and we're yeah. sitting on the floor. So let's go with the front wheels. first. These come out are the Tarex Corsa pads. Corsa, I believe, is Italian for race, right? Yeah, so these are a slightly more fast road track focused pad. Okay. Lots of, is it tread, wear, lots of... Lots of meat. There's lots of meat on them. Yeah. They look pretty good. So that's pads. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're all gonna look ra largely similar. Yeah, it's largely just a case similar. of how they perform, which I guess at some point we'll have to have a follow up from you maybe as, as to how these the line, perform. Like that. Yeah. And then in here, let's... This, this is the good stuff, right? In fact, do you know what? I'm going to keep the camera on your face okay. so that they don't... They, they then get did a full reveal. Did we show reveal. them earlier a little bit? I think Maybe we did. we did. I think we did. Oh, we yeah. Can show them. I'm just going to put some gloves on so that I don't get them all dirty straight away. I was, I was about to say, you're putting on gloves to pick up clean parts. That doesn't yeah. much make sense. But now I understand why. Yeah, because your hands are already, already dirty. Already. I mean, they're going to get 
Great dust and things on them anyway. I think this is a great excuse for us to go and buy some Swarf Eager. Yeah, we should try some of that. Yeah. Here is the type of discs that are available from Tarek. So you have the plain, you've got the grooved, the drilled and grooved, and then I think I think those are the, are those F2000. the F2000s? No, yeah. you've got the F2000s. These so, are F2000s. So these here are the F2000s, those we'll have to find out the name for, but those are the types of discs you can get. And obviously, as I think we showed you, this is what Brad has gone for. Tarek's F2000, which this sort of shape, this looks pretty good, right? It does. That that. It looks quite Ooh, that, that I was literally about to say the same thing. So I cleaned up the hub, popped the disc on, popped two open-ended uh, nuts. Yep. Yeah, they're not bolts. Two open-ended nuts just on the end, just to hold it in place. <laughs> Your nuts. I was getting, yeah, nuts and bolts mixed up. Um, basically, to run through briefly what I've done, just behind the brake on this side on the hub, there's two bolts, which are these. Um, they come off, the Brembo caliper then can come out the way. You pop through two little pins, that releases these clips which means pads can fall and pull straight out. There's the uh, pins. And then obviously tie this up out of the way so it doesn't put any pressure on the brake lines. Disc on. Uh, so is it time just to reverse that process, basically? Caliper back on, much. bolts so in, I'll pins in. Down. Well, no, okay, so pads and shims need to go back in. I think the plan is uh, uh, copper grease as well is a key thing. Make sure okay. you copper grease or lubricate with a specific brake pad lubricant it goes on the back and that is to avoid brake squeal squeal correct? which you most likely will get it's a fairly track focused pad so you're going to get some squeal but not squeal for the wrong reason so yep. copper grease is key basically um so what i need to do is push these pistons back which is use an old pad and a one of the old brake pads and screwdriver and just sort of lever it until they go back new pads in hopefully slide it straight over the disc mm -hmm. um, we'll give these a quick clean up as well um that's a brake cleaner and i think pretty much good to slot it on do the bolts up um, get the torque specs, which if you're doing your brake changes yourself, make sure you go and find them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually using a Mazda MX-5, genuinely using a Mazda MX-5 service manual that I found. So Works for some things on this car. Suspension and brakes, it is perfect for. Um, other bits of the car. I mean, that makes I've sense because again, one. as much as we do joke about it, the chassis is Mazda, the like engine, that. the drivetrain, that's what's a bath. I mean, literally lower control arm right here. Mazda. Now, we are making good progress. Time for a quick update. I can hear some screaming and shouting, or I could from around the other side. But if we come and look here, those are looking good indeed. And the rear one here is done. And I believe if we keep walking around, we'll find a Brad. Hello, he's not mic'd up, so he can't talk and yeah. Well, you can, they just might struggle to hear you. But anyway, you're now working on this rear. Yep. Looks like you're making some good progress. Caliper is pretty much back to go, ready to go back on. It's about to go back on. My hands are ruined. Yeah. This is a mixture of gloves on and gloves off. This is this is the man who told me to wear gloves and continuously reminded me to wear gloves and then fails to wear gloves. But yeah, yeah so that's that one. And then just one more to do over here. 2,000 years later. Many hours later, as you would have just seen, there goes, thanks, Tom. It's literally just not... <laughs> Thanks. Um, many hours later, as you would have just seen from the uh, little clip thing that we've just put in, we are now basically finished. I've given the brakes another quick bleed, things I did lines recently. I thought, let's just do them for good luck. There's some uh, brake fluid right there. But we should come and have a look at the brakes in question. Um, so obviously my Brembo calipers with the Tarex F2000 discs. And then on the front, we have the Corsa pads and on the rear, which you're not gonna see because we have a wheel here. Uh, we have these strider pads, but these are looking lovely. Really nice design on these. A um, little bit of dirt, but obviously that will all come off once it gets driven and bedded in. Uh, this is the correct direction to have them facing so that the veins shoot outward. So as the wheel turns over this way, any of the heat will basically come through these veins and off. Um, so pretty much now it's just get this last wheel on um, and then drop it to the ground, torque everything up. We're not running the spaces currently because there's no point on putting the road forms on that don't use spaces in a couple of days. As I mentioned, ready for players classic at the weekend. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm on about anymore. So I'm sorry for this last bit, but it is very, very late. I think we're almost at midnight, which it's taken a while. A um, few little things to figure out and, and work around. Some diffs that would not come off very easily. Obviously this might not be the way that you change your brakes if you do do it. Don't hold the way you've seen it done against me or us. Um, this is the way that I've done them before and have followed the air manuals that I have. So that works for me. Um, 
I guess I should probably pop this down. Um, well, wheel on, pop it down, and then yeah, we can sign out this video and we can go home and then tomorrow or something I can take this out for a good couple hundred miles and get them bedded in. Here we go then, I have the controller, we've just taken it off the locks. Um, really smart actually, let me quickly show you, I don't know if we did earlier, but this here is your lock. When this um, is sitting over like this, well we can't really show you that, it would be locked in against the bottom. You lift it up and that will now come straight over that lock. So, get the controller, down she comes. This is satisfying. Back onto solid ground. Oh, it looks so weird without spacers. I haven't seen it without spacers in genuinely probably well over a year and a half, maybe two years. Where do the wheels go? One cap to pop on the quick release there. We've kept all the caps perfectly for hoses like this. And this is the new home for them. And look how easy they move. Wheels on the far end or the front end. And they're just coming along like this. Doddle. Mm -hmm. Try not to crash them into each other. Yep. Perfect. Done. And then the hoses are all nicely wrapped up there. The motor's there. We've kept the boxes because, well, yeah, you we'll never know. Right? Why not? And um, we're pretty much tidy here. The floor does need to clean, but we will sort that last few bits to put away and figure yeah, out what floor, we're taking the home. The floor doesn't necessarily need a clean as a result of what we've just done. It needed a clean anyway. Yeah, we've just made, well, I've just added a little bit more. It's one of the many things on my list to get done, but obviously at the moment it is all systems go starting to plan the preparations for Goodwood coming up. Yep. So Goodwood's gonna be a pretty busy one. Which that is probably gonna be the greatest time actually for me to clean up in here because there'll be a few of the cars gone because they're yep. all gonna be down at the Festival of Speed. And Not all of them, and but a, people. a few. Well, first of all, thank you to Benpack obviously for our quick jack, which yep. with our auto stackers, that is gonna come in handy now for tire changes. And I'm sure the guys are wondering what's in the other boxes that we have there. Maybe one to come at some point in the yeah, future. Maybe one day we'll have a look. Sorry, Tim. So, um, yeah, but we'll get that cleaned up. Break dust. Um, we've been working hard, as you can tell. You know, I, I told you to wear gloves and then decided to wear gloves and not wear gloves myself. Yeah. I know we've done lots of shout outs in the last sort of five minutes of this video, but a huge thank you to Tarax UK for sending out this for a little buff. If you're interested in some breaks, check them out. But like I said, I will do an update on how I've been getting on with them in a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Depends on how much I drive this and those two. Is it tempting? Having an electric car to run around in when Tim's not here is good fun. Cheap commuting, right? Yep. That thing is just... Actually, I can actually put stuff in there. It's good. It, it is perfect for if carrying stuff. If I was to take stuff. my family somewhere, we're not all going in that quite clearly. No. <laughs> so we'd go in that. But I think... I need to go wash my hands. Um, <clears throat> what time are we at? We are now, just to give the guys a view, quarter past midnight. What day? Tom, thank you for your help as well. I know I've said it a couple of times, but... I, I don't know that I've been of been much help, help but yeah. I mean, getting that thing together was a bit of a challenge, but... It was, but look, we got there in the end. Okay, anyway, I think we stopped waffling. Time to go home, go to bed, do yeah. whatever we need to do. Because the guys are going to wonder how it took us so long to get this done, but we were doing other bits in between as well, we're I should point out. Busy. And yeah. then we've tried to film as much as we can to try and bring you along for it. So, I guess, for now, thank you for watching, and until next time.